Hi class, I just want to go over the quiz. Uh, class average was 65. I was expecting eh, more like 70 to 75. The way I construct quizzes is 40% is if you have any idea what's going on in this class, we'll get a 40. Uh, the nice thing is, is that nobody is down around here at 40. The uh, next 40 points is if you study and the last 20 points are going to be hard. You really have to know what you're doing. So one would argue, since everybody studies, class average will be 80, but class average won't be 80. Class average will typically be 70. Because under pressure and stress, you will... <coughs> yeah, choke. It's just reality. <laughs> I choked. Uh, everybody chokes under pressure. But anyway, so I curved it up to 83, and this is where your scores are. Now, there is something looking at this data that really distresses me, and it's this. You have 60 minutes to take this quiz, and yet the average amount of time you took was half. That is really concerning, and probably why you didn't do quite as well as you could have. And first of all, when you only have a 20-question quiz, each wrong answer is a big chunk, because that's five points. So you should take as much time as you can. And what I advised you about a multiple choice exam is first do a question. And if you can't figure out the answer in 10 seconds, then move on to the next question and come back to it later. So you can take your time and you're going to find out you have a big chunk of time. Part of the problem with multiple choice exams is that students who aren't used to it, they just go after the first question that they think is correct. And a lot of times, if you had just thought about it a little bit more, you would have gotten the right answer. The other thing about doing these exams is when you get to the end, you know, go to the bathroom, get a drink, whatever. If you have a lot of time left on the clock, then come back and go out over each question and ask yourself, why is this the best answer? Do a sanity check. And that'll help you out. Which of the following is the worst description of a value? Be careful when you read the question, but in every question, and put some scratch paper next to you. This is where our paper exams were more useful. But the key word, what is, what is, think about what is the key word to the question? The key word here is value. And right away, when I think about value, I should be thinking about, okay, what is value? Economic, utility, and also emotion. And so it makes me feel good. Okay, that's value. Saves time. Yes, that's utility. Closer to home. Yes, that's also utility. Cut my monthly budget by 10%. That's economic. So now I've got it down to these two answers. What is the better answer? And this is where this question wasn't a simple question, but I consider it to be medium hard. Saves time is universal. Pretty much time is universal to everybody. So the more time you can have, the better it is. Closer to home might be a value and it might not be a value. A lot of the product, ha uh, not every product is about this. For example, your cell phones. Your cell phones, uh, you could buy it closer to home. Well, it doesn't matter because you can have it sent to you. But on the other hand, if your cell phone can save you time, that's always a value you like. Why is trial so important? There are certain questions I consider this to be an easy one that comes straight from the lectures or they come straight out of the videos. And I know a lot of you don't watch the videos. And why is that? Because YouTube will tell me how many of you watched it. And it's like, huh, so I have this many videos and I track the number and this is how many people watch it. And I understand, yeah, it's long and it's time consuming and it's a lot of work. Well, part of this has to do with this class has a lot of information. And unfortunately, ASU Online has decided to squeeze it in a short period of time. And I've talked to ASU Online about it, and they said, oh, no, they love this work. They want to work this hard. You should work them this hard. Yes, yeah, so and don't blame me. <laughs> anyway, uh, the reason why trial is so important is because if the customer tries my product, I believe he'll buy it. Now, some of these are true, but they're not the right answer. Like, it's part of a chain, and if you miss a link, it won't work. That's true. 
It depends on the judge. Well, nobody picked that answer, so that's good. That's the thing on multiple choice exams. Normally there's one answer that's totally wrong. So now all of a sudden you get a 33%. Trial means I am closer to consideration. Uh, in the funnel, consideration of what? Consideration that the product exists or consideration of making a purchase? And so this question is kind of vague, although I can see why somebody would pick it. What is your first step in understanding a market you know nothing about? This is straight out of the strategy lecture. And I'm glad to see most people got it right. Get information on the landscape. Now, for those who had talked to potential customers, you might be TEM victims. And that's what they always say to you. Go talk to a customer. Go talk to a customer. And I'm there like, oh, no, look at the landscape first. Meaning making products is much more than that narrow piece. It's much larger. And so talking to a customer, remember the five C's, one of them is customer. And so there's a lot more to it. Fusion and marketing is if one customer uses my product, others will use it too. And that's what the fusion is. And this goes back into when we talked about homophily and things like that, that people can influence other people. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And that's the definition of diffusion. Also, this has to do with the Bass model. And that was also straight out of the lecture. Now, context. I'm just testing here. Do you understand what the word context means? So here's the word I should be un un underlining, well, mentally or on paper. Uh, most of the people got this right. But what are some context examples that were given? Well, legal cultural, demographic could be context, but the earth is four and a half billion years old versus the average age of Americans is going up. Although a lot of you put Middle Eastern countries, actually this is part of the reason why Uber failed in the Middle East. And that's that people there like to transact in cash. And so all of a sudden this takes away the, the whole app thing and everything like that. And you might as well just take a taxi. But the Earth is four and a half billion years old, doesn't really impact anything. Someone stole Dr. Cho's Office 360. They have his word, they'll pay. Get it? <laughs> uh, but there are many word processing programs. Google even offers theirs for free, but Dr. Cho keeps using Word. So why do people keep using Word? Now, there is no keyword in here, but the quit, but if there's any keyword, it's why. And so this is what's called a bottoms up question, meaning you can't read the question and then go straight to the answer because there's no keywords here. So you don't know what it is. And so what you need to do is read all the answers and figure out which one makes the most sense because it's Microsoft. Yeah, that's your throwaway because it's the cheapest product in the market. Yeah, there's another uh, throwaway all the reasons listed here. Well, you already know that these are not the correct answer. And so right away, that makes this incorrect. And that's one thing about all the above. All you need to do is find one of these that doesn't work. And then that throws that answer out. And so the answer is switching cost. And this is what also came out of the lectures. Remember lock in and lock out. Well, this is part of lock in. How do I keep people there? Cell phone commercials use a variety of tactics to connect with you. Which of the following does not touch on a value proposition? And so once again, the key word here is value. We charge less than Verizon, economic, Samsung showing beautiful artistic pictures taken with their Galaxy phone. All right, let's think about that one. Showing how difficult it is to take a selfie photo and then showing how their camera can widen its field to get the whole picture. That is definitely one uh, because it solves a problem. If it makes my life easier and solves a problem, it's utility. We offer a two gigahertz processor. So now we're down to artistic pictures. The key word here is beautiful, beautiful artistic pictures. And when you take beautiful artistic pictures, it tends to fall into the realm. Beauty falls into the realm of emotion. We offer a two gigabit processor. Now, this is why people fail a lot at products. 
and especially with the value propositions of their products. And what they don't understand is that just because you have a feature doesn't necessarily mean it's a value. And they think they're values, but they're not values. And saying a two gigahertz bit processor without some kind of context to it, what does it mean? I mean, is that fast? Uh, a lot of people just don't know. On the other hand, beautiful artistic pictures taken falls into the category of emotion. And so, but the question says does not touch on a value proposition, and this does touch on a value proposition. Subscription services have exploded as a business. Part of the reason why it's so lucrative is that people tend to let their subscriptions run too long instead of canceling them when they no longer want it. This is an example of what kind of behavior. And so this has to go with behavior and what are these people when you have subscriptions? You're inertial. You just do it and then you know what you've done and you think about it and then you think about how you feel. But these are people who are slugs and just act. They just don't want to think about it like insurance or something like that. And this is why subscription services are so powerful because people don't turn them off. And so you get extra money and time for it. Hollywood has come up with a new fashion app. It is a medicine. Now this also goes into uh, your homework. And so I can kill two birds with one stone and discuss the homework here. And that's a, a meta search engine that will check 20 clothing websites to give you many options and save you time. It has a camera to get your body measurements and figure out what size you want. It has an automated Photoshop system that shows you how you look in these clothes. This detail analysis to get these features is most likely from. And so is it product positioning? No, that's a place in your mind. Segmentation definition, no, this doesn't talk about any segments. Value chain analysis or customer surveys? And the answer is value chain, because what does this talk about? And when you think about walking, it has multiple values. And when you think about walking through the steps of fashion, the first are, what are my options? So now you've got all these websites combined to one. How does it look on me? And can I actually see myself like in the mirror? And so what it does is it walks through it. And because there are multiple steps here and they're all in sequence, that's why it's value chain analysis and not customer surveys. Okay, a person can buy an iPhone for $1,200 or they could pay $50 a month over two years. The cost is exactly the same, yet the sellers advertise the $50 per month approach. This is an example of and this comes out, out of the lecture. And you could have looked this up about how do customers behave. And so what is the correct answer? Most of you got the right answer. It's framing. And that's it. If I want to sell it to you for $1,200, or they're like, wow, that's a lot of money. I can get a computer with that kind of money. But if they tell you $50 a month over two years, all of a sudden, well, that's affordable. Let's face it, if they didn't use this approach, how many of you would still be owning iPhones? Now, in terms of it, it's not discount pricing because the amount is the same. It's not her behavior. Nobody got that. And it's not reference pricing either. Reference pricing is that you see a price and then the new price you compare to it. Well, the prices are exactly the same. And that's why it's not reference pricing. Because why would you pick one approach over the other if they're exactly the same? So XM Radio, and this is actually based on a true story, was the first satellite radio service. It was $19.95 a month. A lot of people didn't like it because they thought since radio is for free, you know, well, why are you charging me so much? So again, when you start looking at these questions, think about some keywords or what are important statements. And the statement here is it's too high since radio is for free, which pretty much means that people are familiar with radio and the people who spend a lot of time uh, that need radio. Those are the ones who are willing to pay for it because it was an upgrade. Now, after initial success, sales have gone flat. And so right away, this should make you start thinking about the chasm, that it went up, went flat and went out. 
So now I have to get across the chasm. That's what this question is about. Now, how do I solve this one? First of all, let's look at the answers. Um, drop the price to $9.95 per month. That is one of the techniques of crossing the chasm. Make it cheaper. That's why I'm sitting out waiting for the electric car, because I'm waiting for the bugs to get out of it. I'm waiting for the price to come down. I would love to own an electric car, but not for what they're trying to sell it for. I'm going to skip these two because everybody understood that these aren't the right answers. But give a month free trial. Why is this answer better than this answer? And here's was the key to it. This tells you that people know what radio is. And so having that service for a free month, yeah, you get more stations, but you pretty much know what radio is and you have habits and everything else would be more impactful. And not only that, but what it tells you is the price is too high. People don't want to pay for it. So there's nothing in the question. You have to go by the information in the question, not what you think it is. And so give a month free trial. Yes, that's a way to get people to try something. But you don't want people to try something right now. Your sales have gone flat. You want to reinvigorate. What is the best way to get growth going again? And that's the thing, giving away freebies isn't necessarily going to get your growth uh, growth going again. So the key thing here is to look at what are the keywords. This is another question where you need to be careful in how you read it. Restaurants are a hard business. When they open, they sell out like gangbusters because they are new exciting. If you're selling out like gangbusters, do you start slowly or are you rocketing it up right away? You're rocketing up right away and then your business goes flat or drops down this is an example of rational behavior means that the choice i make i'm going to turn a profit and so it's not rational behavior if you, if you figure it out that this is what the chasm is remember the chasm high growth in the beginning goes flat because you hit the chasm and then hopefully you can get it to reinvigorate. And those are those graphs and everything else from the lecture. It's not prospect theory, and it's not the S-curve. The thing about the S-curve is it's actually the latter half of the S-curve. But it doesn't say that business started slowly and built up over time, and then we hit the knee and took off. That's what the S-curve is. This is the chasm. Which of the following is not a key process in marketing? Pretty much almost everybody uh, got it right. And that's that make a financial deal now is sales. And that comes from the first lecture. Determining which sets of customers to approach. Now the thing is, this is not a key process in marketing. This is a key process in marketing. And so you have to be careful about reading your wording. Marketing works due to two social characteristics. They are this goes back to the first lecture, influence and ho uh, homophily. Although I think I would have given you credit if you put Dr. Cho in his superior sense of humor. <laughs> uh, the thing about influence and networks is that influence and homophily creates networks. So this is basically the characteristics. And this is a byproduct of what happens out of these characteristics. Now, there are a lot of words and a lot of stuff to look at. And this is why taking good notes is really helpful because notes will tell you because on your notes you can write this is where to look for these answers or what lecture to go back to. You've got 30 extra minutes. Might as well take advantage of it. Helmet Dryer. <laughs> this is one of my all time favorite names. Makes electronic beauty products from his home company in Germany. His best selling product is the Hair Dryer, which is a wireless device that dries hair people value his product for and everybody got it right that looking at the values it's utility wireless in adopting a product what is the first step everybody looked at the funnel this is great <laughs> i was i'm happy when you do well anyway which one of these can act like an influencer for buying a car and i think the people who picked this one didn't really look at the other answers. And that's the thing 
problem when you rush through a quiz. You tend to jump at the first answer that's right, and you think that's right, but read through all the answer, all the other notes, answers noted here. A family friend who is a car mechanic can be an influencer in an owner of a car you're interested in, can be an influencer, and so everything's there. Dr. Cho makes delicious Korean barbecue chicken sandwiches. I actually do. Uh, no one has heard of these sandwiches and no one knows anything about them. What is the following best tactic to get people to try the product? So you're trying to get people to trial. And here's the thing. It says no one has heard of these sandwiches. So him flyers out at lunch when people are hungry. Hand out samples for people to try. Now, the best tactic... So to get people to try the product, guess what? When you can see the food and if it's appetizing and all, and this is what they do at Costco. And so that's why this is a better answer than this. Uh, which of the following is the easiest product to sell? I can't believe no one got this right. And this goes back to, remember, pain is three times gain. And that's why they're always trying to sell pain products. So this one is about pain. What value is this here? The pet hair magnet. This is utility. This is economic. And this is emotional. And so, yes, all of these are values, but the greatest value of all, and this comes from the behavior question, is pain. And this is where conceptual thinking comes in, remembering what is pain about. Last question. During the COVID-19 crisis, stores ran out of toilet paper. People were driven by what value to do this? And a lot of you realize that people were just <laughs> scared to death that they were going to run out of toilet paper. And so they made a run on it, which was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, but the thing is, you see other people grabbing for toilet paper. And you think, oh, I better get some too before it all runs out. And so it just multiplies on itself. Uh, People were driven by what value to do this. Monetary, there were a lot of sales. Well, that's really good for the people who's selling it, but it's the people uh, who are buying this stuff up and all. And they raised the price of toilet paper to try to reduce the frenzy, and that didn't work. And utility, toilet paper has a lot of uses, including substituting for tissues or paper towels. No, that's not an answer that people typically cited. So now that you see all the solutions, I hope you're thinking, wow, that quiz wasn't that hard. I can't believe I got all those questions wrong. So hopefully by going over this, you've seen how to approach these quizzes and you'll do better on the next one. Good luck, everyone.